Hello YouTubers, my name is Frederick Lopez and today I'm going to review a film that I'm really really quite fond of. It is one of my favorite films ever and is also one of the films that inspired me to be a filmmaker and that is Saturday Night Fever from 1977 directed by John Badham and starring John Travolta. Yeah, this film is just phenomenal. I once discovered it when I was eight years old and uh, a lot of the content flew over my head but what uh, captivated me was the sound track, the way it was shot, the Bee Gees music, John Travolta's performance, just something about it was very much of its time. And I even got into the Bee Gees and the soundtrack and just all around the movie at a very young age. Yeah, I was one of those strange eight-year-olds, but you know what? Uh, I still love it to this day, and I recently just saw the 40th anniversary screening in theaters. I also picked up the director's cut Blu-ray for its 40th of Saturday Night Fever. It is phenomenal, and yeah, Saturday Night Fever is just such a fantastic film. Uh, its soundtrack is very memorable, the music, the dance scenes, but above that, it's a very, very dark film at its core, and much deeper than one could expect from what is known about it. It was based off a New York Magazine article called The Tribal Rights of the Saturday Night, and it was about disco culture. You had a screenwriter of Serpico write a screenplay and basically come up with a story around that article. And we're introduced to Tony Monero, John Travolta as Tony Monero. He's uh, about 20 years old, he's 19, and it's a coming of age tale. It's really about him working at a paint store and then on the weekend blowing off all his money at the 2001 Space Odyssey where he dances and hangs out with his friends. The thing is, he's not going anywhere in life and really, besides the music and dancing, this film is truly about a man who is not happy with his life. It is very dark, it has a lot of other elements in there, such as social class, politics, race, so many other layers, abortion, so many other elements that are in this story that make it feel more real. It very much feels like a real story, and much like the other films of the 1970s, it is a dark, dark film. Besides John Travolta, you also have Karen Lynn Gorney as Stephanie, Barry Miller as Bobby C, Paul Papp as Double J, Joseph Cali as Joey, Donna Pescal as Annette, Julie Bavasso as Flo, and Martin Shakar as Frank Jr. But yeah, those are your set actors, and all the actors have great chemistry with one another, and they really do play into their characters very, very well. As a matter of fact, some of the supporting cast was actually typecast and kind of stereotyped after this film because everybody thought they were like the characters in this, when they really were not. And Robert Stigwood produced this. He saw John Travolta try out for Jesus Christ Superstar. And before this, John Travolta was on a television show, Welcome Back, Cotter. And uh, he ended up having a two-picture deal with Saturday Night Fever and then Grease. But the first being Saturday Night Fever. And boy, is it such a great performance. He was nominated for an Oscar for this. He did not win, but he was nominated. And the Bee Gees made up the soundtrack along with Yvonne Elliman, uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band, the Tavares the Tramps, and the soundtrack sold over 20 million copies, the most for any album until its record was beaten by the Thriller album by Michael Jackson. So yeah, this soundtrack is very, very iconic. Great music. It has that opening of Staying Alive, and we see Tony Manero strutting. Everything you need to know about the movie, the tone is set up in that opening. Such a great scene. And John Travolta's sister plays a pizza girl, and his mother is uh, the lady that was asking for paint at the store. And yeah, it's a great opening, one of the most iconic openings. And this film also uses very unconventional camera angles that are not used in any other films too much, especially during that time with Dutch angles and just different views. Very, very great shots done by John Badham. He would later on go to direct films like Short Circuit and the Stakeout films. And we're introduced to the way he acts with his friends. We're introduced to his parents. His parents constantly dog him over and over, criticize him. He is not in good faith with his parents. He's just constantly harassed by them. In the way, they're almost very verbally abusive towards Tony Monero. And he has to deal with their bullshit after getting back from work. His father just got laid off from his construction job. And then we get that night fever scene. Perfect scene and with the Rocky poster Farrah Fawcett and then that famous scene where he's just like, you touch the hair, don't touch the hair and the whole family discussion and then his brother being a priest. 
You also have other politics things that are very controversial at the time, with abortion, like I mentioned earlier, and then his brother coming back home, leaving the priesthood. Very, very controversial for a Catholic family. But, uh, yeah, it is a very real greedy film. Gene Siskel is listed as one of his favorite films, saw it more than 17 times, and actually purchased the white suit at an auction. It's probably a, worth a lot more than it was when he got it, but, um... Fantastic movie. We get to see the nightclub, 2001 Space Odyssey, and we're introduced to Stephanie Mangano, and he basically sees her there, is really, really interested in her dancing, and you find out she's at the dance studio he practices at. He's with his friend Annette, and she kind of wants to have a relationship with him, but he doesn't want that. He doesn't want to do it with her, doesn't want to marry her, but you can tell she's really into him, but he's not into her. So the whole movie is basically him meeting Stephanie, and they get to know each other, and they're basically practicing for this sweepstakes at the 2001 Odyssey for a dance competition. But that is just a basic plot. Really, it's about so much more than that. And ultimately, there's this moment where Stephanie tells Tony that he's a cliche. He's no one going to nowhere. Really, it encapsulates the character of Tony Manero and the struggle he's going through during this entire film. And it's a sad film, really. All the characters are tragic in their own way, whether it be with Annette being raped at the end, Bobby C. committing suicide. And now in the director's cut, there's two or three great scenes. There's a little bit extended on the... How deep is your love scene when they're driving to Stephanie's new apartment, the night fever scene, but you also have a part with uh, the Brooklyn Bridge and him looking at it and just putting his finger uh, across the line of the bridge. And it really shows early on that he wants to leave his area, leave his life. But we don't get that in the theatrical until later. Also, uh, you have a scene where his father gets his job back and you see Tony's reaction. And it almost feels like it's not needed, but again, could be a catalyst to how the rest of the night went. That could have been the fuse that set off a chain of events. Then you also have him talking to Stephanie on the intercom outside of her apartment. So just a little bit here and there, but ultimately it's still the same movie, whether it be the director's cut or the theatrical. And this film became so popular at the time that uh, they created a PG version just so anybody can see it. And I actually used to see the PG version on VHS. You can't find it on DVD or Blu-ray, and it had some disco duck scenes, and more extended night fever scene, and a couple of other things in alternate angles, but uh, they don't have that on the Blu-ray or the DVD. But uh, yeah, Saturday Night Fever is a classic, and I like all the actors in this. They all feel like their characters, and much like Rocky, it feels very relatable. They're Italian-Americans. You get to see some of the racism going on in the 70s, and some of the racism going on between other communities with the African-American community, Puerto Ricans being called spicks, and stuff like that. I mean, it is heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Them using drugs with speed. And, I mean, it is just crazy. But ultimately, it is, again, a movie of its time that's very visceral, very real. And I'm not so sure Saturday Night Fever would be made now, especially the way it is now. It's very real and talks about issues. Even though there's more education to certain issues presented in this film, I feel like people don't talk about them. And this film is not afraid to go to some very, very dark places. And ultimately, I think that's why it's such a great film after 40 years. The fact that it can have this dark undertone at its core of underneath the great music, the disco lifestyle, and the cinematography and dancing of the film with the Bee Gees. The You Should Be Dancing scene is phenomenal, one of the best dance solos. And speaking of that, John Travolta rehearsed to that song, and they were almost going to cut out the scene and then just use close-ups, and he threatened to quit the film if they didn't have full shots of his body, and I'm glad he did because it is one of the best scenes of all time. I mean, yeah, John Travolta dancing in movies is a, is a given. He teaches everybody how to dance. He dances. This is, like, up there. This is the epitome of John Travolta dancing and being a disco king. And speaking of Night Fever, they had the song Night Fever by the Bee Gees, and originally it was just going to be called Tribal Rights of the Saturday Night. Too long of a title, so they just shorted it to Saturday Night. And the director saw Night Fever, and this is why don't we just add the fever from Night Fever onto Saturday Night, and it became Saturday Night Fever. But ultimately, it's one of my favorite, favorite films, and I could go more into detail about it, but I think if you haven't seen the film, you should definitely check out Saturday Night Fever for yourself. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart, but you would not regret it. It is one of the greatest films ever made, one of the greatest 70s films that just defined disco, that era. 
And if you love the Bee Gees music and if you love dancing, you're definitely going to love this film. It is such a classic film, and yeah, it's among one of my favorite films. I'm just uh, captivated by this film. And no film has really quite been like it, although I do like some of the gritty elements of it. It feels a little bit like Rocky, and then with his friends, the only film I've seen that's kind of similar is Good Will Hunting. But uh, this is ultimately very different. And another thing, too, John Travolta does such a great job acting and got an Academy Award nomination. He very, plays a very, very unsympathetic character. It's kind of hard to sympathize with his personality. He's kind of a jerk to everyone, but at the same time, John Travolta plays it with such a level of humanity that above, with the other actors, you kind of relate to them. You, there's, there's something to like about each person, even though they all have their flaws and they're deep down not very good people. Something about it feels very real in that regard. As something about it where you, you feel like you're following Tony Monero and his friends each Saturday night. You feel like you're in that high of the Saturday night fever at the disco. But also, I love the little small romance between Tony and Stephanie in this film, how deep is your love seem Bee Gees. And ultimately, Tony Monero going through a character arc, he's a very different person at the end of the film compared to how he was at the beginning. And that's because of Stephanie. He learns how to grow. He sees that there's more to the world, more that he can do. He's not trapped in that small bubble he's really miserable in. And I like that. Ultimately, it's a chain of events that just happen that causes him to leave Brooklyn and go to Manhattan. And that scene with Bobby C is just sad, it's tragic. And then you also have the dance competition. He loses, he wins. And you also have the dance competition. He wins, but he knows that the Puerto Rican dancers did better and he sees the injustice. So even though it was a victory, it was quite a crushing defeat. Again, very, very dark, but if you have not seen the film, I would highly recommend seeing it. And if you have seen the film, then you know how great Saturday Night Fever is, and I highly recommend it. I give it a perfect score of a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, and an A+. Saturday Night Fever is one of the greatest films ever made. And it's no surprise that it's still relevant today, 40 years later. I mean, 1977 was quite a year of Star Wars in this, and this pretty much put John Travolta on the map. And I also want to give credit to the other actors. I think they all did a great job as their characters. They all felt like real people. That the, the way they were towards each other felt very real, like they were a real group of friends. And uh, a whole bunch of classic scenes and dialogue that ultimately feels real. This film is very endearing, and something about it it's hard to describe really it just is perfect it's a perfect capsule of the 1970s in every way with the music the way films were with them being Italian with just everything and then the dark nature of it it's very much like other films in the 1970s that were very dark after the Vietnam War in that decade so yeah I would highly recommend Saturday Night Fever it is a perfect score and I just love it Ultimately, I can't say anything negative about the film. Uh, for the faint of heart, there might be too much profanity, very vulgar uses of a woman, <laughs> and the content might be a little bit too deep, but ultimately, if that doesn't bother you like me, it's going to be a fantastic film. The soundtrack, If I Can't Have You by Yvonne Elliman, uh, More Than a Woman by Bee Gees and the DeVars, Disco Inferno by The Tramps, I mean, Staying Alive, Night Fever, You Should Be Dancing. All by the Bee Gees, How Deep Is Your Love, More Than the Woman. I mean, soundtrack is phenomenal, and the way the cinematography is, it's just so... It just feels so 70s, feels very real. It was all filmed on location in New York. The Dutch angles, the different type of shots they use, that are in a way almost like pre-point of view. The steady cam shots, just everything about it is just really, really shot. Well, that scene where uh, Tony and Stephanie are dancing to more than a woman by the Tavares, the dance hall. Uh, the White Castle scene was very funny with the friends. Uh, Prose. It's a great story with terrific performances and an excellent soundtrack that is just out of this world. Ultimately, it's dark and vibrant at the same time and just everything that makes the night so feverish. Saturday Night Fever is a tour de force of a film. And many people list it under their best films ever made. It is one of the best films ever made and among one of the best John Travolta films ever made. This film is just awesome. And yeah, it has a sequel, but like most John Badham movies he doesn't direct the sequel to, it's not as good. And this film is just a great film. 
the sequel lacks the darkness that this one did, but uh, ultimately it's filled with tragedy and yet has some high uplifting moments. And it's just, it's a film unlike any other that goes through so many topics and issues that aren't really discussed about. It's not afraid to go to the dark places while also having many light places with the music. I give Saturday Night Fever a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, and an A+. If you have not seen it, go see Saturday Night Fever, and if you have seen it, watch it again. We all know how special this film is, and yeah, 40 years later, it is still staying alive. That's it for my review of Saturday Night Fever. If you like this video, click the like button, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your favorite moment is from Saturday Night Fever. And yeah, stay tuned for my upcoming review and which I'll review Staying Alive, the sequel to Saturday Night Fever. Anyway, that is all.